Um, my name is Rob Lennox. I am policy advisor at CIFA. My colleague Nick Shepherd, chief executive officer at Federation of Archaeological Managers and Employers. Yes, thank you. Um, both of our organisations um, are uh, deeply engaged currently with thinking about um, the processes of Brexit, and um, the idea of our session today was to. Um, in the context of the session that is the, the conference theme, which is looking at our global profession, think more broadly about Brexit, particularly um, the impacts that it's having on our profession and what we're going to do about it in terms of advocacy. Um, and so we've challenged our speakers today to try and avoid the navel gazing that many of us have been doing over the past 10 months. Um, and uh, it's very easy to get drawn into. Um, and challenging them to, to define a positive debate focused on action. Um, and so we're recognising that, that many of these issues um, about how we work with our colleagues in the rest of Europe and around the world are things that we should have been talking about anyway. We may have been talking about them today regardless of the outcome of the referendum. But we're talking about them now and so we're looking for opportunities to protect what's good about those relationships and about the systems and to seek better structures and better relationships both with our colleagues in the rest of Europe and around the world. Great. And, and uh, what we'd like to do, I think, at this stage is kind of understand our audience a little bit better. So um, Brexit will have different impacts, different risks and different opportunities um, for different parts of the archaeology and heritage sector. So I think at this stage, a very quick show of hands, there are two stages to this one. First off, I'd like to find out where you're actually coming from. So can I have just a show of hands to, for anyone who is in the uh, academic sector, universities? Yeah? Not bad, no, kind of a half. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. Who is, we'd say, commercial sector? So that's Consultants and contractors. No separation there whatsoever. You're all in the same boat, as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely. Who would uh, class themselves in the kind of regulatory sector? That's uh, national regulators and local authority regulators. Thank you. Not a bad spread, actually. So I think um, that's, that's good, because our speakers will be talking to all those different constituencies. So it should be something for everyone. But it's worth noting, I hope we're going to get some different forms of feedback from those uh, different constituencies as well as the day progresses. Now, one more show of hands for me. I'm just introducing this. I haven't told you about this. <laughs> I'd like to... <laughs> who, who thinks that Brexit is a good thing for archaeology and heritage? <laughs> Who thinks Brexit is a bad thing for archaeology and heritage? Good Lord. <laughs> who, who doesn't know? Absolutely. <laughs> well, I, I would say, personally, at this stage, there is a fourth option. I don't think it will have any impact. Okay, well, we'll... we'll one hand for it will have no impact whatsoever, and Mark will elaborate on that later. <laughs> <laughs> Provocative as ever. Excellent. So we're all coming from a very particular point, well, p p p point of view. That's where we're starting from. Today is going to be a bit of a journey, perhaps, and we'll see where we end up at the end of today. Um, at the end of today... Um, there will be an outcome, some product from this, because one of the reasons that Rob and I are doing this as representatives of CIFA and FAME, and, and there's a bit of CBA in there as well, is that um, those organisations, and indeed other organisations across the sector, are taking forward uh, plans to advocate across these um, important areas over the coming months and indeed years. And it's important that we are able to gauge the opinion of, us, of our colleagues, um, take um, these uh, opinions away and feed them back into our organisations and bring them together in, uh, across forums like the Archaeology Forum, for instance, where we can start to coordinate our advocacy and coordinate our actions, because there have got to be actions with regards to the concerns and risks that exist. So I'll be exploring or, or detailing a little bit more later as to exactly what uh, those outcomes will be, but there will be some actions arising out of this. 
Okay. Okay, so for um, those of you who are coming along to this session uh, thinking, I've heard about this Brexit thing, um, I'll, go and I'll find out what it's about today. I'm going to do 35 seconds on what's actually happened. So we had a referendum in June last year. The UK voted very narrowly to leave the EU. Um, nine months of considering how we go about starting that process led to the triggering of Article 50 of the Treaty of European Union, um, which has started the two-year timer for us to come to um, a, a divorce negotiation settlement um, with a deadline of March 2019. Now, we know through the process that we've been through so far that we're aiming towards a hard Brexit. Um, and so we are going to be uh, faced with consideration of what it's going to be like to be outside the single market. Um, and because of that, we don't know exactly what that um, divorce and settlement is going to be. Uncertainty about what happens both before and after. Um, as well as um, a realisation that we are in all likelihood going to have to deal with um, an end to freedom of movement at the end of this two year period. As I say, many caveats, many things that we don't yet know, um, but that's the, um, the road that we're set on. We know that we're going to get a great repeal bill in September this year. Um, great repeal bill, not really the right name for it, it's really a great continuity bill. It's going to translate the, va the vast body of EU regulation and um, and directives into uh, domestic law so that um, we don't sort of lose the plot completely at the end of this two year period. Um, we were thinking that in 2020 we'd have a general election but where we can start the process of thinking about this new body of domestic legislation and what we want to do with it to make it um, appropriate for the new independent United Kingdom. Um, but now we know we've got a snap election called for June this year. I'm apologising to any of the, the, the speakers who've had to rewrite their presentation in the last week because of that. Right. Oh, right, it's me. <laughs> Excellent, yes. Well, um, what, uh, we, we, as with all of you, I mean, we, both CIFA and FAME have come into this uh, debate with some priorities, quite frankly, in terms of what we think is important. And from a FAME point of view, I don't know, bones about this trade association we're concerned with the essentially with commercial success of our members one of the most important things to us is around commercial <coughs> uncertainty of course this is it, it's uncertain impossible to predict exactly what will happen with regards to brexit and um, the, the commercial landscape um, and in fact, you could say we've already been on quite a roller coaster ride as far as that's concerned. Um, it looked to be a disaster at the beginning with recession predicted. So far, that recession hasn't happened. Um, a lot of people will say that's because Brexit hasn't happened quite rightly. Um, that quickly moved on to a situation where we were getting involved with the government getting very much behind infrastructure de development, housing, transport infrastructure, etc., etc. A boom time for archaeology. Fantastic. Very much linked to their efforts to try and boost the economy as, we, as, as a result of Brexit. Of course, there are, we now realise there are some real potential risks attendant upon that push for um, infrastructure in terms of um, the uh, capacity issues within the industry and all the potential risks that are attendant upon that. And the, the government's um, not so very sly push for deregulation in the planning system. All of these things are, are more or less linked to the Brexit um, situation. And so we're on a roller coaster ride with regard to understanding what the economic impacts on commercial archaeology, for instance, are. One of the other issues that FAME and CIFA and the rest of the industry are particularly concerned about is access to labour. I mean, this is something that's been talked about not just within archaeology, but across the, uh, certainly across the construction and development industry. And we've got some very, very long coattails that we can jump on there if we, uh, uh, around our concerns. But much more widely than that as well. What's going to happen to um, EU um, uh, uh, staff who are already working in the, in the UK? What's going to happen to UK staff working abroad? What's going to happen to our prospects of bringing more staff into the UK? hugely important in the face of the capacity issues which we're, we, we're possibly faced with over the next five years. Other issues we're, we're jointly concerned about is the impact on um, 
already uh, mentioned regulation um, with regards to planning re regulation, indirectly affected perhaps by Brexit, but more directly in terms of environmental impact assessment, strategic um, environmental assessment. Probably likely that those regulations are going to be brought across wholesale in the uh, Great Repeal Bill, but later on Tim will outline that there are some risks uh, hiding in the long grass there, which we have to be very, very careful about. Um, a, a lot of archaeology is enabled in that way. So th there's th th those are a lot, some of the things that key issues that we're concerned about. Um, other, other issues, particularly uh, uh, um, concerning to the academic um, sector, obviously, are the, is, is the issues around European grant funding and uh, to, uh, to uh, academic uh, projects, etc. This may, on the face of it, may not be something that initially concerns the commercial sector, but actually it is, because um, impacts at a university level are going to have, <coughs> potentially have huge impacts on um, the, the number of uh, graduates coming out of university and into the commercial sector just at the time when we need them. So all of these things are interlinked and we'll find, I think, throughout the day that our sectoral interests will overlap hugely and we'll discover that there's, there's an awful lot of linkages. So those are some of the impacts. Um, the other side of the session as we've designed it is um, the advocacy and the implied question is when you've got an impact, what are we going to do about it? And so as Pete Hinton and others throughout the weekend have, have suggested, the sector um, is working together to, um, to consider what our policy positions are in these um, cases of impact and um, to consider uh, more broadly the sort of, sorry, what the, um, what the existential <coughs> questions are around those kinds of kinds of issues. So we're having conversations with the sector. We are doing research within our partners, but also um, with our university friends, um, and uh, 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 the whole range of colleagues that are represented at this, this conference into what our policy position should be. Some of the issues that we're going to be lobbying on are substantially non-heritage issues. We're a very small voice, but we have lots of powerful partners in other sectors <coughs> that we're trying to build relations with, um, particularly with the natural environment sector and with the built environment sector. These are people with whom we are, we are, in the context of Brexit, sharing more in terms of our advocacy ambitions than perhaps we ever have in the past. We have new opportunities to make inroads with these organisations. Um, and then, of course, as we've said, more technical issues, the more direct impacts on, on how we do heritage, heritage protection, whether it's EIA or VAT or any of the other interests that we may have in European directives and regulations. And, of course, considering how we continue to work with our colleagues in Europe. Um, this is an issue for commercial work that's done around, uh, around Europe or across borders, particularly with colleagues in Ireland, where there is um, a considerable work across from the borders, but particularly in the academic sector, where access to research, research networks is going to potentially be um, uh, of, a, of a, an extreme impact. Um, there was the slide before showing um, Matthew Collins's recent research that was published in British Archaeology this month, showing just how successful UK institutions have been in archaeology at levering money from the EU. So even if we can convince UK governments to put in the proportional um, amount of money that uh, we have been giving to Europe to distribute to research, we're actually getting more than that as we currently stand. We need to work on those kinds of issues. So some broad themes for today, which hopefully some of the speakers will be speaking to. What's the impact of the reputation of the profession? at home and abroad in the context of Brexit. Um, how do we continue to work with our colleagues with Europe? What changes will there be um, to those relationships? Um, what do our European partners think about this? We've got um, Sophie and Manuel from EAA here to talk about their, their work and some of their ideas about um, the future relationship with CIFA and with the UK more generally. Um, and what's CIFA's role in the Brexit debate? How will CIFA champion itself in an inter as an international brand um, for accreditation after Brexit? Tim will be speaking to those issues. Um, and more broadly, how do we resist the introspection that comes from sitting in a room where everybody um, is a uh, pro-Remain supporter? Um, 
what do we as archaeologists who think that our discipline has um, an emotional draw on people, how do we conceive of that um, discipline influencing our British identity and our European identity going forward in this context after Brexit? So, given that we've, we've got lots of impacts, lots of risks, um, there still are lots of opportunities to advocate on behalf of archaeology and heritage. There's lots of opportunities at a, a macro level. We're faced with the, the election on June the 8th. And it'll be interesting to see whether there are any ideas in the room as to what archaeology should be doing to try and input into that uh, at that level. But uh, more importantly today, particularly, we were focused on trying to uh, inform the position of the, uh, the, ar the archaeological uh, organisations, CIFA, FAME, CBA, etc. Um, so towards that end, what we will be doing um, after this session is Robin Arby summarising um, the outcomes, some of the ideas that are emerging from um, the, the talks but also from the debate that occurs during the day and we'll produce a summary which we're keen to circulate. So um, we'd, w what we'd like you to do, um, those of you are looking to continue this debate um, and would like to receive this summary is to uh, leave your details, we've got a list, uh, all your names are on the list over there off to the left. So before you leave today, just um, leave your details, um, or actually your names aren't on that list, you need to leave your name, so you leave your name, leave your email, and just leave your email, and we'll contact you, make sure that uh, you actually receive that summary. We'd ask you to take that back to your organisations when you receive it, when you receive the um, summary, to, s to discuss these things further. We'll certainly be taking that back to our organisations and inform the debates at the Archaeology Forum to try and coordinate our activities. And that's the whole point. For those of you that don't know the Archaeology Forum very well, it meets four times a year. All the key organisations are there. And for those who don't see an awful lot of coordination across archaeology, this is one of the, the, the key areas where coordination really does occur. Brexit is one of the key issues on the agenda at the Archaeology Forum. Everyone is there. This is an opportunity distilling the, uh, the um, messages we're getting from days like today and from people like yourselves to actually come up with a coordinated response to Brexit. So it's important stuff. So please leave your details, continue uh, to be involved with this and continue to help us shape the advocacy that uh, our organisations will be uh, making going forward. So I think... Uh, we're bang on time. Fantastic. So first speaker coming up.